Miami on the west side, man. Woo! Yeah, I can't lie, man. Every time I'm driving these L.A. streets, I think about how far I came and how much further I got to go. Yeah, it's my first episode, so I knew I had to come to Cali to make sure I was special with a very special guest. Twelve years later, I'm going to sit down with somebody I ain't talked to in years. Try to get to the bottom of this shit. I'm from Brooklyn, Brownsville. Brownsville, Brooklyn, if you never heard of it. It's about 4,000 miles from where I'm at now. If you can make it out of there, you can make it anywhere. Oh boy, here we go, man. A day in the life of me. Um, let me think, man. I'm so nervous with this. <laughs> you should be. It's my first sit down and a long sit down. Um, listen, man, I don't really do this a lot, but uh, first podcast episode, first guest. The one and only. Uh, I, I, I know her as Nikki Mirage. But <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work, so we switched it up to Nikki Minaj. That was fine, in my opinion. You changed it to Nikki Minaj, and yes, I prefer to this day Nikki Mirage, which is my last. Well, shout out to Nikki Mirage. Shout she, out to Nikki Mirage. She was out there back in the day. Yep, yeah. and but. Oh, dear, yeah, but Nikki. And but. Listen, man, yo, here it is, man, the one and only Nikki Minaj, man. Uh, hey. So first of all, let me start off by saying, I'm nervous. Don't be. Shut up. I think I'm, I'm nervous. Just I imagine me being my scraggly self with the baby fat purse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember that photo shoot we did in that, in that abandoned building that time? <laughs> <laughs> this guy won't let me live that down to this day. Shout out to White. White be like, yo, man, you was in my abandoned building and she had no shoes on. <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah, okay, boy. <laughs> Yo, I, we, nah, we, if we was gonna come up, yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. really. Yeah, 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 he, he really, every time I see this guy, he be like, Yo, you was in Brownsville. <laughs> we went to Brownsville. That's what, I mean, I guess that's what, that's the come up is really about, just doing stuff that you would never do now. I would do it now, and I want to say something that now that you said that, I don't know why it's like when people make it a little bit the fans look at them as a new person yeah. or they'll, they'll look at oh nikki wouldn't do this now or so the other day i posted something about eating uh about wendy's people were literally yeah, saying you, Bitch, don't act like you eat wendy's <laughs> what are y'all talking about so what do you think i eat i remember a couple of my friends came over um to spend a night when i was living in malibu one time and they and like their boyfriends were asking them so what does she eat for breakfast the fuck do you eat for breakfast? Yeah. Like nothing changed. Like I'm still that that same exact person that was on a come up DVD, and and people start looking at you different. I understand when Jay said it's not I didn't change. It's like people y'all change. Y'all start looking at me different or expecting me to be different, but I'm the same exact same person. So you telling me you still go to Margarita Pizza on? on Absolutely. When I when I when I go to New York, I gain so much fucking weight. Like that's yeah. why I was on Jimmy Fallon looking at. So what's pounds. one of your what's one of your st Still, wait, wait, how many years in the game you would say? I would say you got nine, really, 2008. What is it? Take 11 years, maybe? 12? Yeah. 11, 10? Yes. 10? Somewhere in there. My debut album came out in 07. How many years of loving the what, game? What, 20 times? How many years do you think you loved the game? I've loved the game for like I, at least 15 years. Because I've been trying to, because I, I was trying to get in it before that, before we ever even, before I was on a DVD, anything, you know, I was trying before I met you. So, like, I was loving the game for a long time. Do you still got the same love? It's different, but I want to, but I want to clarify that question. I have, I still have the same love and passion for music. Okay. It's different. The music and the game are different. And you know that. Definitely. Definitely. So, do you think bars still matter? I do. Do you? Yeah, definitely. I, I I can't listen to nothing else if it's not had any bars attached to it. I mean, I'm not listening to really nothing right now. And that's and that's the <laughs> thing, and that's why. And sometimes I feel like I'm in a, a, a dilemma. Do I dumb it down to go with what's down, what's do happening now? And like that's why it'd be so hard for me because. I hate coming out, putting out something that everybody else is doing and looking like I'm on the bandwagon. I always like to try to switch it up. So, but at the same time, if you want to make it in the game, you kind of like have to follow waves and trends. And so that to me is like the biggest fucking thing that irks my soul. So I'm I'm always between, you know, but it's, but on the album that we're working on now, I, I feel like I'm finding a great balance. I feel like it took me a minute to find the balance of being me 
and and giving pe the people what they're hearing now. But I feel like now I'm finding a balance. You feel like you raised the bar for maybe, uh, like I think brown skin rapper chicks, no disrespect, but it got, I think since you came in the game, it kind of made it hard for them. Really? Yeah, I think brown skin chicks got to work a little harder. I think they, yeah, it's like you set a, you set a bar for like brown skin chicks to be like, because a lot of chicks at that time was like, oh wow, well, I, you know, Nikki popping right now. I gotta be at least trying to catch up to look like her somewhat. And the brown, yeah, a lot of brown skin chicks really, like I think brown skin chicks got to work extra harder. Oh, well, I will say dark skin and brown skin women have to work extra harder in any field. Yeah. Just like how I feel being black, a black woman, I feel like, you know, if a white woman and me was going into the same job at Wall Street, I feel like I wouldn't get the job off the rip just because of, of me being black unless I was double and triple times smarter than her and double and triple times better than her. So, yes, I do agree with that. But, um, of course, it's me, so I don't feel like my complexion is the reason why I made it. But I, but I also don't. I try not to be blind or play dumb to what what's really happening in the world. I think you came. I think you came in a game at a time where complexion played a part in a lot of stuff. Really? Yeah, definitely. Know, know like even the videos were that. like everybody was going with like the lighter. Oh color. yes, yeah. yes, you're absolutely right. But I feel like now it's changing. I feel like a lot of people yeah, now are changing. making it their business to be like we, melanin and you know that whole trend is very much happening right now which I love. Yeah, definitely. I think I think it's going back to that everybody getting back to their essence, everybody starting to claim they were like people wasn't even claiming their nationality like back in the day. Remember you ask somebody if they hate you, they'd be like, nah, I'm Jamaican. Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I, I feel That's like That's a fact. That's a Fendi. It's a it's definitely a Fendi. <laughs> That's a motherfucking Fendi. Um what else I wanna ask you in in like you and you, you know, knowing your story and how you came in the game through me, would you do that? So would you right now? And would you do the same thing for an artist, a female artist? Would you would you go through the trenches with a female artist yourself? Because a lot of because now the doors, I think a lot of everybody think they can get in the game because of a Nicki Minaj. They feel like, oh, I, I could do this shit, mm -hmm. but it ain't it ain't that it ain't that simple. Would you grab a female artist on the come up, and would you go through what you went through? I don't know if I will go through as much headache as you put up with for me, cause now, cause I don't have to, you know. Um, and plus, you, you, you had, you was more focused on me, and and I would be, and I would have more than one artist. You was, mo you had like me and Gravy, and yeah. like you wasn't really splitting your time with more other people. You was like making sure we was, you know, trying to pop. So, but I am working on my label, and yes, I am. Like even with the challenge that I was doing for my song, I. I spotted like a bunch of girls rapping, rapping, and from New York, and like they was reminding me of myself, and they was reminding me of the come up era. Like so, yes, I definitely right now am looking for talent, female rap, male rap, female singers, rap male singers, everybody. Like I really am, and yes, I am willing to do it now. I never wanted to do it before because I felt like I didn't want to just do it just to do it or just to get a check. Like, you know how people do it just to get a check from a label and stuff like that, and then they don't care about the artist? I wanted to really invest my time and effort. Is anybody, is anybody, anybody caught your eye? Or you people just... caught my eye, yeah. I was posting them on my Instagram. Um, I'm people a... that you might have liked, or? Yeah, I, I, it's some girls that I, that I like that I never heard of before. I remember I dated this girl, right? And uh, I ain't going to say her name, but. <laughs> so, she knew me and your story, and I think she wanted to be you to make me. I was like, so for Halloween. She like I'm like yo I you know I don't fuck with Nikki so she's like well I'm Halloween I'm Nikki for Halloween and you posted I was mad no way yeah you, ironically out of out of billions of people <laughs> you posted her on Halloween I'm like bitch what are you doing what are you doing and she was like good for she you. started talking like you and all I was like oh this is good crazy. for you nigga <laughs> I think that was like can't comma. escape me. <laughs> and, you know, people will say, like, watching this whole interview, they'll say, well, damn, Fendi, when the last time, you know, because nobody knows, we, we actually, we haven't had a conversation And what, I'm going to say what, I mean, yes, you, I'm pretty sure you got the numbers, what, 2008? I'm not good eight. with numbers, you better The last time I saw you was, like, 2008. No, yes, it was, no, it can't, no, no, no. I promise you. Eight? My album came out in 2010, wow. I saw you before your album came out. Last time I saw you was in North Carolina, it was at, like, an after party for, like, a tour with Lil Wayne and we kicked it then and I'm like all right out of all this time so of course I got butterflies at the end of the day I'm like you know what I gotta sit down with this girl and we gotta come to some type of balance because moving on in life and trying to prosper you can't hold no grudges but why was you out there dissing me 
maybe I was, you know, I'm gonna say this. I mean, hurt? I no, not really hurt. No, I felt like, I felt like. Uh, let me put it the way I, I want to answer this question in a proper way because if you don't answer it right, you're like, yo, you you bitched out on that. Right. You I feel like uh, part of it was like, I felt like I started something, and when and you, you start, didn't reap the benefits of it. Absolutely, and we and, and we and, and that goes for anything when it, in a relationship was or whatever it might be. If you start something and you don't reap the benefits from it, you feel it's going to be a it's, you're going to feel like, hey, you know. But at the end of the day, it was like I felt like you didn't give me my credit. And I felt like I felt like this is so crazy. That's, I'm telling Everybody you. Everybody in the world knows that. That's what I felt like. Everybody, but and that, but see, this is what Deb was saying. Like when people be saying, "I didn't pay enough homage," whether it's to you or to other people, I be feeling like I know everybody knows I how homage, I though. got my start. But Fendi, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. before I dropped my debut album and made it big, me and you fell out. It wasn't like I made it big and then said, "Fuck you, bye." It was like, and I, you know what I think now looking back and I was younger and I, now I can put things in perspective. I don't think you were understanding because we played around so much and plus you were older than me. So you probably was like, oh, just, she just nagging or she just complaining again. You didn't understand that I was really reaching a breaking point and maybe I didn't articulate that right. You know what I mean? You probably thought, oh, we always get into it. We'll be fine. We'll get through it. Da, 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 you know, but. I was starting, but I was going through some, some shit emotionally. Like I really was um, making making decisions with my life. Like I moved from New York. Like I drove to Atlanta. Like in, a, in my car with all my stuff, everything I owned in my car. And I don't think you realize I was just ready to be like, I'm ready. Like I have to go. Like I I can't wait anymore. No, I, I got that. I, I feel like I got that. But I'm telling you, you asked me why was I talking bad about oh, right, you right. or why so, I was. It was like, all right, cool. Here's something. But, uh, but 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 my thing is, and I I I, I accept that. I respect that because I probably would feel the same way. But my thing is, we fell out. Like we had problems, and then I put out a debut album that did you know four hundred thousand in first week. It wasn't like. That all my it wasn't like my success came and then I said fuck Fendi. Okay. I said fuck Fendi first. Okay. You said fuck Fendi before when we were together. Remember that? <laughs> yes, I did. One yeah. of the <laughs> Yeah. I'm just saying. Look, so niggas like, was bringing that up ten years later. She been said fuck you. Right. Then you said <laughs> Fendi can kick rocks. So you were setting me up for this. Was it all? Was it all? No. I premeditated. Never had that plan. No. And okay. No, I, 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 I need to ask I you that because I was I like, not premeditated why? Why? At all. Five years later, they would bring up sound bites to you saying "fuck me," like nigga, you didn't get the you didn't get the hints then. I'm like, word. But um, yeah, I think that's what it was. I felt like, you know, I was young. But what I, you wanted me to do, like, okay, so once we fell out, once I hated your guts, then I made it. You then wanted me to double back, like I, wanted my, I, I just wanted my credit. But what? How did I? Didn't, I never spoke story, on you when I was because your story would say, Dwayne Carter. Saw a little girl on a stoop. No, that's not true. It would always say on the come up DVD. I would always say I would DVD was up, heavy at the time. I was I would always say and Little Wayne saw me on the DVD. But you were kind of you were kind of like you. you Bypass you know, it because I wasn't fucking with you. You was being like me. You was being you was being on some bullshit. Come on, you can't tell the truth. You wasn't gonna. I don't feel you like I'm not that kind okay, of person. Okay. So I could have. I, I could have name dropped. Years you later, song. you could have said. No, I mean, I don't, I'm sorry. And I, I don't want. You, I don't want the name drop. I could have said, well, th this dude Fendi, da -da -da, he put me. But at times, first of all, I felt like I was telling the story over and over. And sometimes, like you, I, you might think that. But none I, of my chicks believe me. I used to be like, yeah, I, I discovered her. They'd be like, okay. But yeah. that's dumb, Fendi. Like Lil Wayne Fendi, discovered her. Fendi, I, I'm Fendi, telling you, the story to the world was that. Little Wayne discovered Nicki Minaj. I mean, on the, a DVD that yeah. he was on, and but, but, I, I even said, "There's interviews of me even saying, and the and Fendi strategically placed me in front, right in front, right be, after um, Wayne, that, so wasn't that he." Wasn't that our plan? That was kind yeah. of we, we kind of came together. Yeah, that yes, was. that was your idea. Look, that was our plan. That was it was okay, really great. like a okay, we're gonna yes. get this motherfucker to move. That's right. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, yeah, Fendi, if you know, if I, I did, let's say I did 500 interviews. After a while, it's a, it's a lot of things that I keep on, like, don't be one to say. Because they ask me it all the time. And I be thinking, well, everybody knows this part of my story. So, no, I don't have to necessarily go that deep into it. Even when they say with the little Wayne question. Or how many times you worked a road, you were Red Lobster. Like, it be certain questions that's annoying. But I will say, if I'm mad at you. Yeah, fuck you. And I'm, at, no, and I'm doing an interview. I'm not necessarily going to be gushing over you. But I always, but Pete, but I did say. 
Lil Wayne discovered me on the Come Up DVD. But listen, I think, I think, listen, I'm going to tell you why it was really more, it, it, it brought more pain to me. Because at the time, when you broke the barriers to come in the game, is when people were, it was like, it was like history. Mm -hmm. Like, here come a new female um. who really, who, you know, and, and here's a new female that came out of nowhere and now she's making noise and all the other rappers who were, who, you know, now, now you came front and center now. Mm -hmm. So I, the, the, the execs wasn't giving me my credit. They didn't, oh. you know, so I, so of course it, it also hurt me financially because it was like, I wasn't getting nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I was, I was salty about that. Mm -hmm. Very salty about that. Mm -hmm. I was bitter. I was like, what the, f you know what I'm saying? And I then. I could tell that you were bitter and I, and I felt like it was more hurt than anything. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. And, and I, and I. As a man, I'm going to yeah. tell you that. I'm going to say that. As a man, I, it was like, you know what? There's a time, I, you know, people say that they have this saying about give me my flowers while I'm alive. Mm -hmm. So and when, you, when, when, you, when you came in and you burst it out and things were going crazy, mm -hmm. I wasn't getting my flowers. And I, and, and I think anybody. But let it, me ask you this. Before I, came, before I burst it out and became successful, wasn't you fine with when me and you parted ways? Wasn't you fine with when, when we said, when I said, fuck you and I'm going by, blah, 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 blah. No, I wasn't. You, was, you wasn't you wasn't running me down saying, no, I don't leave. You was fine. I think, I think you know what? I think but you then when I way. made it. No, no, <laughs> let me tell you why. And you be honest with me. During your, during your great years of success, I have never came out reaching out. I'm not on your social media. I'm not trying to yeah, get your you number. No, but I could have still been the guy going, hey. But yo. I would have respected that if you would have been like, "Hey, yo, well, nah, I need to be a part of this uh, equation." Da, da, da. I'm such an easy person to speak to, and I'm surprised that you didn't take nah, that. No, I know. I know what, and that's me being a cancer. You know, my cancer ways. I'm stuck in my ways, and sometimes I tell people all the they time. Love, like sometimes you would take. Sometimes you would lose out. You know how people would die with with fifty million in pride. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your pride will set you back so far Absolutely. that you would be like, you know what, fuck that. I ain't reaching out to this Absolutely. bitch. Absolutely, because if, if, if you would have reached out, i know me. Like, I would have been like, I would have respected it. Yeah. The same thing with Deb. No matter what happened with me and Deb, like, she'll say something or do an interview and say something nice and I'll reach out instantly. Like, that's just how I am. I'm not gonna, I re whether people know or not, I know what everybody did for me. I know who put me on. So and it's other people that feel like you do too. People that was around yeah, you're before. Yeah, full force in them, right? People that have been around before yeah. you. Yeah. It's just like everybody wants the stamp of I did this for Nicki Minaj. At the end of the day, I did this for Nicki Minaj. But along the way, and and my biggest push and my biggest thing was you and the Come Up DVD. Like the Come Up DVD for people that don't understand it. It was Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook on steroids. Like yeah. it was everything. And if you wasn't on the Come Up DVD, you wasn't popping. And That's like, a and and you know, we all we gelled also just as human beings. Outside of rap, we always would we like we had good banter like in front of the camera. We was playing, dissing each other, laugh like stuff like that. Yeah. So it just worked. But I just want to make it clear that. We weren't cool for a while, and I was out there busting my ass for a while by myself in Atlanta. So it wasn't like I just, you know, as soon as I made it and like I dropped you, like I would never do that. I think that. even in Atlanta, you in, even Atlanta, you shouted me out. Like, you did like, like hood affairs, DV. Mm -hmm. Like you would shout me out. I'm not even taking them from that part. I'm saying that at a point where you know how say you know you build a house in the equity. Grows tremendously, but nobody but what says if you. you what if, but what if you took a cut? Well, but what if on that same house, you you don't think that that house is whatever or whatever for whatever reason? You say you know what? Well, just give me a little bit of money right now. Let me get the fuck up out of here because I don't know if this house is gonna be worth ten million. And I don't want the headache. And then that house so, sells ten million. Now you want them to double back and say, hey, come back for some more money, house yeah, man. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I did that first. Say I felt like I always owned up to Nicki Minaj. But Fendi, my thing is this. You have to understand, we were not cool right up until... Yeah, no, no, cool. no, absolutely. We wasn't we, cool by at all. Ways, we, I was mad at how you were marketing it, marketing me and promoting me. And you have to understand, I'm a female. I was always business savvy, and you know that. Okay. I was always strong-minded. People think money made me that way. I was always that way. I always had set things in it in how I wanted to act. When I was about to go down and meet Wayne, 
I, I told told my husband, like, we me and you spoke about, like, how Wayne is going, you know how Wayne feels like everybody probably wants to bust it open for him and how I was going to be acting in there so he knew I was a different type of person. We we would speak about everything throughout my career. Yeah, before, you know what we, saying? Even, like, before we even, I think, I always date back to when we first met Wayne. You remember that? Kind of like, I, I memory is great. How, you got a good memory, but anyway, I Wayne know. reached out and we met in North Carolina. Oh, you mean uh, how we met, met Wayne? Yeah, we yes, met I stayed on Carolina. Wayne's bus for like hours playing him music and he yes. really listened. I remember he you listened remember, to all my songs. I wasn't there. Remember, I was yeah, in jail. Yeah, what you How's Reg? Reg is chilling. Reg, Reg's he, always... Did he take me? Who Reg, took me? Reg took you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reg took you. Reg's always like, he can't pronounce Nikki, so he'd be like, Nikki, Nikki. <laughs> Mm. Shout out to Reds, man. I still, I still, I still love Reds. I did a big birthday party. Showed up recently. Like I was saying, um, even in a nutshell, with that, like I just feel like I'm glad that it took growth mm -hmm. from me, as well as yourself. Yeah. You know. Um, and DJ Booth, shout out to him. He was in my ear like last year. I was in Hawaii. He was. He called me in his room and gave me this long lecture mm. about life. And yo, man, this is that. And I'm over here like and he, he, he put it in my head, but then he left. And I'm sitting here like, and he gave me a number on the low. He was like, yo, but, uh, you, you probably know. probably punch right in his neck. <laughs> he was like, yo, man, um, yo, I'm telling you, man, y'all need to get fixed this shit. And I was like, you know what? Where? I'm going I'm to try this. I'm going to try this. And when I reached out, I, I really was, I was surprised with the, with the reaction. It was like, you was like, ugly? <laughs> like, I, I was, did I say something like, what's up, ugly? Yeah, I was, but you know who it was at first. I think I hit you with the. Yo, it was a guy who met you. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. On MySpace years ago. Even for people that don't know how we met, um, I met her years ago on MySpace. Um, I don't know. I think it was like 2006 when that was like the first. To me, that was like the first social media platform. Of course, yeah. Was it before Facebook? Yes, yes. Yeah, we met on MySpace, and I reached out to her, and um, she thought I was some stalker guy who just I wanted sure to get did. a phone number. You said, what did I say to you first? You said, can I have some? And I didn't respond. And I went to Bundy and said, who is this man? And Bundy was like, nah, he could get you popping. Yeah, that, and I, I think from there it was like, but I like the fact when you showed up, when we first met for the first time, you showed up with the energy ready to work. Um, I used to have my rap books. Everybody hated on you, though. When you first I came around, that's crazy that you just said that earlier. Yeah, I know everybody. That. When you first came out, when you first came around me, they was like, "Man, what are you gonna do with a female rapper? What is that about?" And I was like, "Man, listen, you watch." And, um, but what made you have even the insight to think that it was time for a female rapper? Though I never got to ask you that. Like, I always, I always love, um, I always love female rap. I, I grew up with the I grew up with the little Kims. I grew up with the Foxies. I grew up with you know the, I, Queen Latifahs, and I never was a big fan of Lauryn Hill, even though that's the good for you. That's my best because Lauryn Hill only had one album. Yeah. So I'm um, me being from but, Brooklyn. But, but she also was, did so much with the Fugees, so it balances and let. Yeah. So I never really got into her, but at that point I'm like, yo, the game could use a female, and it was something that nobody wasn't really searching. But let me ask you something. Were you actively looking for a female rapper, or I just happened to rap? You and just happened to rap. Yeah, yeah, I figured that. I was yeah, looking I for a female so. rapper. I, I think, think so. But you know what? I might say I was looking for a female rapper because Gravy had Biggie. He had Biggie. The Biggie vibes. He had the Biggie vibes, and I felt like, yo, it's time to maybe try to revamp something from that era, yeah. but with a twist to it. Yeah, okay. And that's what I felt it was. Uh -huh. Shout out to Gravy, man. Um, I haven't spoken to him in a long time either. But, um, you he know, hit me up a money. couple times. Yeah. I think I follow him on. Shout to him, man. Because he was in the movie that I did, Barbershop. The Barbershop movie. He had yeah. a little small role in that movie. So we ended up... I got love for him, though. I I, I, tarn I, I tarnished him for like three years. Like, I kept... You know, I was on my bully shit at the time. But shout out to Grady, man. Love you, man. Good. I'm in a better space, greater energy. Um, and I think that's what happens. When you yourself are in a better space, it seems like things around you just start mending and working out. And that's... That's the space I'm in. Like when your energy is love and openness, the universe gives you so much. It's just like you put it out, you say what you want, and God just gives it to you. And that—that's where I am in my you life. You think that is people? Can you say it's people that, that that are around you at the time that makes your energy better? Of course. Yeah, I agree to that too. I feel of like course. if you got great energy around you, it, it only puts off great energy. But when you bring, like, I, even back then. I had negative energy around me. Like mm. everybody would be like, "Yo, fuck that bitch. Wow. Yo, she gonna be a summer jam, son. Let's pull." Her. 
So it was like a bunch of, yeah, it's just, this is what, you know, nowadays the game, a lot of street guys are trying to find their way in the game. Mm -hmm. So they bring the negative vibes around certain mm -hmm. people to try to feel like that's they in. Oh, right. You're absolutely right. I'm that's pretty sure you, you, you probably went through that. That's a fact. But, um, I appreciate the sit down. Thank you. Um, you know. Hopefully. And I'm sure there's other things that we're going to do. I'm sure this is, yeah. you know, just... This is like a little thing. rocky. I wanted to sit down with you and just, you know, air out my little, you know, my little my little situation and get over it. And so, for the record... Um, do you love me? Yes. For oh. the record, let me just say for your fans on Nasa Fendi, Fendi may not think that I've given him the credit, but he definitely deserves all the credit. He, this man, put in... So much work, time, effort, energy, and genuine love and belief in me. And I will never forget that. And that's why at this place where I am in now, I want to be of help, you know, to him in any way I can. And, you know, I know that only good things will come out of it. Because when I look back at those DVDs, like, sometimes I, I literally cry. When I look back at certain, like, pieces of footage, like, I just, it makes me emotional because... I just remember that sky was the limit then, and we didn't know where this was going to take us, but we we was having fun. I, I will say that, like, we were having fun. And I also will say that throughout my career, I've always said, like, I, I tr I've been trying, not necessarily to duplicate you, but I wish that there was an, someone like you in my career for the last 10 years as well who is more like that energy, that New York, that just, I don't give a fuck energy. Like, because the thing is, sometimes people come in your life, whether they manage you or whatever, and they're, if they're, if you're afraid of your artist, it's just, it's not good. Like, you need to be able to kick that door down and say, bitch, wake up, you know, get on this flight and da 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 And I, and I would always say shit like that. Like, I could imagine, like that, that Dame Dash energy, just like not caring, like, no matter how big that artist is or gets, you knew them before they were that. And you... Well, and you should be, you know, able to be able to say anything to that person, no matter how big or famous or whatever. And I used to always say, like, Dad, I wish I had somebody like that who would just have that raw, you know, in-your-face energy with me as opposed to being on eggshells and, you know, just to be towing around stuff. Because I'm such a upfront, like, a upfront person and so are you. So, you know, I think that worked really well. That got me working very quickly, got me working hard. Um, even like with times, like, I don't know if you remember that time when it was freezing fucking cold and you had just landed and you was like, yo, let's shoot the click clack video. And I was like, are you out of your fucking mind? It's freezing cold. It's, it was like snowing. It was about to start snowing and I got to sit up there wearing some tank top and be cold. But you know what? We, we got it done. So that type of energy behind somebody that's talented, it brings out the best in them. You know? Do you remember that? Do you remember that, um... Then we went to somebody's basement and shot a video. So I think it was the freestyle was called Dirty Money Freestyle, but uh, <laughs> tell a bitch with the crown or running like, like Chris Brown. Brown. We was in somebody's basement. You had bogus in your you was like the whole night, like, yo, what the hell is freezing in here? Yeah. <laughs> Don't say tiger. boogers, say yeah. snot. Well, it was snot, you know. And I'm like, yo, this girl is going hard, yo. <laughs> yo, we had actually went on Jamaica Avenue and put an outfit together in like 10 minutes and just oh. shot the video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, late night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Yes. God bless you Wish with you this Pat Fendi show the best as well. Luck, man. Give me a hug, Thank man. you so much. Oh, my God, it. man. Yeah. This wasn't, a, this wasn't a fake hug, right? This ain't no fake right, hug. Right. This, <laughs> this is a real hug. But peace out and look out for more stuff from me and Fendi, the person who put me on! <laughs> <laughs>